government is going to the country. Mr. Baldwin is leading his followers faced on all sides by opposing parties. British Paramount News is impartial, giving to each party leader the opportunity to speak. We desire to go on working to maintain world peace and strengthen the League of Nations. And I give you my word, and I think you can trust me by now, that our defense program will be no more than is sufficient to make our country safe and enable us to fulfill our obligations. That much we must have. Today, our country is leading the world on the path of progress and recovery. And let us once again unite to keep her in that proud position. Mr. Attlee. The government seemed to accept the position that some two million of our people cannot be found work. And yet, they say we can't reduce the hours of labor. We of the Labour Party say that if this is the best that can be done under the present system, then the present system must go and another one be substituted. Mr. Maxton. The Independent Labour Party on this occasion is not asking you to entrust us with the government of the country. We are only running a score of candidates in chosen constituencies in different parts. We believe that we are living in a time of great opportunity for humanity. We want our 20 ILP candidates, chosen for quality rather than on a quantity basis, to be returned to the House of Commons to see that these possibilities are realized and that government face boldly to their responsibility. Mr. Lloyd George. We want wages for work and not those for people who have nothing to do. Let Britain lead the world in another genuine effort to eliminate the horrors of war and the miseries of unemployment from its homes. The occupant of one home, 10 Downing Street, will as Premier be faced with the still unsolved problem of widespread unemployment, the two millions whom industry even now cannot absorb. The threatened coal strike will present the next government with another thorny problem. At Geneva, the new administration must at once declare its hand and grapple with the Italo-Abyssinian dispute. References to all these questions appear in the thousands of election manifestos now pouring from the press. In this general election, we plain citizens have all our share in the guidance of the Empire, whose lines of communication are patrolled by the greatest navy that has ever carried the flag of one nation over the seven seas. Whatever party is at the helm, the glory of the fleet, of Britain and her empire, is our common heritage under His Majesty the King. In selfless devotion to his country, the King sets a fine example to us all. We humble citizens are now called upon to elect our representatives, an obligation that everyone should fulfill. Remember, on polling day, your duty is to vote. <laughs>